All right, so we have D and E. So this D and E, they are also very simple. Let me quickly do them. So uh, this one is straightforward. They're asking us to say, we find the term involving X to the power five in the expansion of that. So what you just need to do is to use the same formula to find the anything term, which is N choose R, then we have A, N minus R, B, R. So this is the formula we're going to use. So how do you find the term that has X to the power five in the expansion of that? It's simple. So you just use that same formula. So we're going to plug in the value of N is seven. The value of R, we don't know. So the value of R at the term that has X to the power five, we don't know. So our target here is going to be um, us finding the value of R. So in other ways, we are supposed to find the value of R. So A there has been given to be X, then raised to the power seven minus R, seven minus R, and then B is given to be one over two X raised to the power R. So I'm going to equate this to, I'm going to equate this to, um, to seven. Okay, before I do the equating, uh, let me say, okay, let me just simplify this same expression. I should, let, let me not equate it to anything at the moment. Let me just simplify it. So we have seven choose R there. And then we have X to the power seven minus R. And then this expression can also be simplified as one over two. And then in um, before I do that, I don't want to confuse anyone. So we're going to do this one over two, and this will be X to the power negative one. I hope you understand what, I'm, what I've done because we know to say one over X can also be written as X to the power negative one. So this is what I've just done here. And then from there, I'm just going to separate, I'm just going to separate everything here. So I'll have seven choose R and then we have X seven minus R. And then I'll have um, one over two raised to the power. Oh, there's supposed to be R there. This R, one over two raised to the power R. And then I'm also going to have X to the power negative one raised to the power R. So when we simplify, when you simplify this further, we're going to have seven choose R, and then you have X seven minus R. Then we have um, um, one over two R. Then this one can also be written as X to the power negative R. So I'm just going to get the terms that, I mean, the, the paths with X. Yeah, so I'm going to get this part and that part. So I'm going to get X seven minus R, times x to the power negative r. Then I'll equate it to what I've been given there. So in the question, they are asking us to say, we find the term that has x to the power five. So I'm going to equate this to x to the power five. So I'm trying to find the value of r. So when you are multiplying um, two indices with the same base, what do you do? You add the powers. So we're going to have x raised to the power seven minus r, then plus negative r. So we're going to have negative R there. Then we say this is equal to uh, this power R, this, uh, oh, sorry, X raised to the power R. Oh, sorry, not R, it's supposed to be five. I said we equate this to, the, to X to the power five. So not R. So we equate this to X to the power five. So the, if the bases of, um, of a certain equation are the same, which involves indices, means that the powers are also at the same. So what do we do? We, um, we equate the powers. So I'm going to have seven minus R minus R being equal to what? Five. So R minus negative R and negative R will add to negative two R, this will be equal to five. So this seven will go to the other side of the equal sign and we're going to have negative two R being equal to five minus seven. And five minus seven will give us what? Uh, negative two. When you divide by negative two, divide by negative two, the value of R is simply just going to be what? Uh, R will simply just be equal to um, one. So at the term that contains X to the, to the power five, 
the value of r is simply just um, the value of r is simply just one. So for us to find the term that they're asking us to find, we can now use the formula n choose r, the same formula that um, I wrote there. So I'm going to use this formula to find that term. So let us do that. So uh, we're going to find our n is what? Our n is seven and then r, we have found it to be one and a is x raised to the power seven minus one, six, then times one over two x raised to the power r, which is one. So um, we simplify this combination. So seven choose, yeah, so seven choose one, the answer is seven. Seven choose one, the answer is seven. And then we have x to the power six, then times one over two x, because one over two x to the power one is one over two x. So when you multiply, you discover that one x there will cancel with one x there. So we are going to have seven uh, over two x to the power what? To the power five. So we have found the term that has x to the power five. So this is how you simplify these terms. It's very simple. They are very simple and straightforward. Okay, so let's see how we can simplify the next question. Let's see how we can simplify the next question. Okay, so the next question is also simple. Or oh, before I think, before we simplify the next question, let us also look at another question that is a bit similar. So f 15th term, this one is straightforward. Um, for f, you just need to find r and then r, remember what we said, r is found by uh, the nth term. So in this case, we're going to say 15 minus one. So the value of r um, in this, uh, I mean, in that term is simply just going to be what? 14. So the value of r in the, on the 15th term is going to be 14. So you say uh, 20, choose what? choose 14, and then you plug in all those values, and then you find the value. So you say x raised to the power 20 minus 14, six, and then um, b, my b is negative uh, one over two x, then we say to the power 14. So it's as simple as that. You even simplify the expression here, you get the answer. So f is straightforward. So let us look at um, G before we, we do the, that equation that I've skipped. So we look at G. G is very simple as well. Yeah, so G is very simple. Um, we're trying to find the term independent of X in the expansion of this. So the term independent of X means that the term contains X to the power what? To the power zero. Yeah, the term independent of x means that it contains x to the power zero because x to the power zero is one. So one times that term, it will just give you a constant, meaning that that number is not going to have, uh, meaning that number is not, is not, is not going to have, um, not going to have x. Yeah, so let's continue. So, the term independent of x. So the first thing that we do is to, is to find the value of r. So we know that this is going to be n. So the value of n there is 20. So the value of n is 20. So we have 20, choose the value of, I mean, choose r. Then the value of a is x to the power three. Then we have n minus r, that will be 20 minus r. And then we are multiplying this with negative one over two X raised to the power R. So let us simplify this before we equate it to X to the power zero. So we simplify this. Uh, this is going to be, this is going to be, uh, so we have three times uh, 20, three times 20 is going to give us 
uh, 60. So let me write this first. So we're going to have x raised to the power three times 20 will give us 60. And we have three times negative r will give us three negative three r. And then we're multiplying this with, so we can split this. We can have negative one over two raised to the power r. And then we can also have one over x raised to the power r. Yeah, so from there, the other thing that we can do here, we can simplify that further so that we have x 60 minus 3r, then we're multiplying this with uh, uh, negative one over two to the power r. And then this can also be written as x to the power negative one, and then r. We can simplify this further. Okay, and then we have uh, negative one over two R, and then this part will give us X to the power negative R. So we get the terms, I mean, we get the parts that have X and, they, and then we equate it to X to the power zero, we equate them to X to the power zero. So we're going to have X to the power 60 minus three R times X to the power negative R. Then we say this is equal to X to the power zero because we're trying to look for the term independent of X, meaning the term that has no X. And then when you're multiplying two indices with the same base, you add the powers. So we're going to have X raised to the power 60 minus three R, then minus R. Then we say this is equal to X to the power zero. And then since the bases are the same, means that the powers will also be what? The same. So negative three R minus R will give us uh, negative four R. And then we say this is equal to zero. So this will cross the equal sign so that we have four R is equal to 60. So when you divide by four, divide by four, the value of R is going to be 15. So at the term that is independent of X, the value of R is what is 15. So let us try to prove if this term is really independent of X. So let us um, plug in, um, or let us find the value of that term in short. So that term, we're going to say n choose r, which one is my n? My n is 20, then my r is what? Uh, 15. Then we have um, our x to the power three raised to the power n minus r, which is uh, 20 minus 15. It's going to give me five. And then I'm going to have my b there, which is negative one over two x raised to the power r, which is 15. So we have 20, choose 15, um, okay, let me just find the value quickly. So 20, 20 choose 15, 20 choose uh, 15 is simply just, uh, okay, it's a big number, let me just leave it like that. We know that it's just going to be a constant, it's going to be a number there. So we have 20 choose 15 and um, x, time, uh, x to the power three times five, we get x to the power at 15. And then we're also going to have uh, negative one over two uh, raised to the power 15. And then X raised to the power 15 as well. So we have X raised to the power 15. Okay. So you can see that if you multiply these two terms there, this X to the power 15 will cancel with that X to the power 15. Hence the term independent of X will be 20 choose 15 uh, times uh, negative one over two to the power 15. So when you multiply the co this combination, when you find the value of this combination and the answer there, it gives you the term that is independent of X. So this term, if you do the simplification, the simplifying there, it will give you, um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's going to give you something like, 900, negative 900, uh, 969 over 2048. So if you if you have no time in an exam, you can even just leave it like this. You can leave it here. Yeah, if you don't have time, but if you have enough time, you can simplify it further and find this. Yeah, because just for you to reduce this to that, you are dealing with big numbers, it becomes um, it consumes a lot of time. 
All right, so let's do the last question, which I said we are going to go back. This one here. So this question is saying, we find the term that is involving x to the power two and y to the power two. So this is also very simple, we do the same. Okay, so we find our n there is eight and then our r is, um, then our r is the one that we're trying to look for. Then the value of a is x over y. Then we have eight minus r and then, um, eight minus r and then the value of b is negative y squared then we have everything over 2x squared and then uh, to the power what? the power r so we simplify this so uh, we have eight choose r and then we have um, yeah we have x uh, raised to the power eight minus r over y raised to the power x eight minus r and then from there we're going to get um we're going to get um this uh expression as well we equate it to uh, i mean we raise everything to the power r so we have two uh i mean negative y two to the power r then everything divided by two to the power r i think on the previous questions i don't know if i was putting r on the half let me check. Oh, I was deleted. Yeah, but it's, um, I remember there was that one over two I put in brackets. I, I think I'd put it, they, there was something that I wrote there like to the power R, so it's just okay. All right, so, so this is what we have. And then we also have X raised to the power two R. So here it's just a matter of uh, simplifying again. And um, we can simplify this further, we can separate the terms that have x. So I can write my one over y eight minus r alone there so that I also write my x eight minus r there. And then we are multiplying this with a term also there, which is negative y raised to the power two r, then everything over two r. Then we have uh, one over x to the power two r. Then we can simplify this further or just from here, we can just get the parts that contains r. So we have this part and that part, then we equate them to, uh, to x to the power two. So we can have, so we have x raised to the power eight minus r times one over x to the power two r. And then we are equating this to what? To x to the power two. So we're trying to find the value of r. So we have eight, eight minus r times, this can go on top there so that we have x to the power negative two r. And then we say this is equal to x to the power two. So this is, uh, so I'm just remaining with one minute. So let me just simplify it first and then you can find the term on your own time. So we have eight minus R minus two R is equal to two. So let me just help you to find the value of R. So we have eight minus three R is equal to two. This will go that side. We have negative three R is equal to two minus um, two minus eight. So we have negative three R being equal to negative six. So the value of R is two. So you can just replace the value of N and R in the formula to find the term that contains x squared over y squared. Thank you very much for watching tonight's lesson. See you in the next lesson.